I'm going to begin installing the capacitors. Now there's eight different values of capacitor. By far the majority are these 0.1 microfarad marked 104. I'm guessing that this one could be an important capacitor value-wise. The reason I say that is these two capacitors are 8.2 picofarads and this one is a 2.7 picofarad. Signal flows, this is the antenna input, signal flows this way into this high gain amplifier. And these capacitors in conjunction with these two capacitors and these variable inductors make a tuned bandpass filter uh, approximately the width of the air band say 100 megahertz to 140 megahertz I assume the majority of what this does is to block out some interference from the high-powered FM commercial stations that is public broadcast stations these two are 15 picofarad. Now these inductors are tunable, but we wouldn't want to be wildly off on any of these five capacitors. Because these capacitors are very small and they're identified with numbers, I'm going to use this, uh, this uh, microscope with an electronic display. That's not nearly maximum magnification. Now I have to turn the thing on end because of the overhead camera. But sitting here, it's entirely perfect. I may use a, a component tester or even my bench meter to measure the actual capacity. I finished with all the capacitors. You know, those little round thingies. Well, all the ceramic capacitors. And I've installed six of the sockets because that's all that came in the kit. But I have sockets. In case you, I doubt that you'll need to know this. The end of the socket is marked, most by a divot at the center, uh, right there. This camera's out of focus, but that's it. See what I'm talking about? The silk screen is marked similarly. Make double sure that that notch. It matches the silk screen. Later on, when you plug the ICs in, one end will be marked, usually with a divot, sometimes with a paint dot. Now, if you have inadvertently installed the socket the wrong way, that doesn't mean you need to take it out. The socket itself is bi-directional, it doesn't matter. But you must make sure that you end up with the marked end of the IC facing the marked end of the silk screen. This is a more common kit error than you would think. I've been asked to look at kits, especially student kits, and that invariably is one of the things that I find wrong. They put the socket in, installed end for end. Then when they install the IC, they make it match the socket. Beware of that. This is the first component I found missing. This resistor that I thought was missing in part one. It I turned up. Don't ask me how. I'm going to install the beads, inductors, and transformers. Okay, they're 
not bad. Uh, L1 and L2 are listed as having green bodies and being adjustable inductors. L3 is a 100 microhenry leaded inductor. And that's this fellow. It looks just very much like a resistor. A little bit bigger than the resistors you find in this kit. It's not bigger than all resistors. In the event, it is color coded brown, black, brown with a silver band. T1 is a transformer. That's 455 kilohertz. It's square, silver, has five leads, although there's seven solder joints because the can has is leaded. And then we have one Z1, a leaded bead. Now this confounds a lot of people. All it is is a wire with a ferrite uh, surrounding it. It's a, a, a bead. It's it's an RF choke, if you will. The resistance from here to here is almost zero because it's a wire. It's not connected electrically to this ferrite. There's no markings on it other than just a black body. Rotate it around here. It's just ferrite powdered ferrite installed around a wire. These two leaded devices are also installed hairpin style. Z1 actually marked Z1 Will be installed like that. L3. We'll make it beat it again. Put the uh, tolerance multiplier at the top. L3 is installed here. L3. The coil marking is sort of off to the side, but you can see where the round body is installed. The transformer installs here. It can't go the wrong way because one side has two leads on it, the other side has three leads. Drops in like that. And then the two coils two adjustable coils are installed here. They're not really polarity sensitive, they just drop in the diagonal holes. We've got a section headed crystals and filters. Now it rolls on to the next page. And there's three of them and there are these three devices here. A 10.7 megahertz filter and they make a, a big deal out of you know watching for the polarity it's got a yellow body and a red dot pay attention to that red dot we have a 10.245 crystal oscillator and it's marked 10.245 and we have a 455 kilohertz bandpass filter. Both of these are equivalent to bandpass filters. And it's a black body gizmo marked LT455EW. The only thing, I mean, these, this is a five leaded fellow. He can't be installed incorrectly. I think he goes right there. 
the crystal is bidirectional. You can see it's marked in with the frequency. And that's right here. No problem. This three-legged device with the red dot installs in these three holes right here. The red dot is oriented such that that lead is not only boxed in square, but the silk screen has left a square solder mask and it just pops in there. There are two LEDs mounted on the board. Can't get them mixed up. There's a two leaded LED, which should be self explanatory. There's a three leaded LED, which guess what? It has three leads. Both of these face forward on the board, so you want to put them down tight and square so that they're not leaning away. And then we have a switch, same deal. Faces forward. And again, you, you want to make sure. Now, it's held in place by virtue of these springy legs. So it'll stay in place. I'm going to install these electrolytics. There's nothing special about them. They're marked in easy to read letters. They all have one well, they're two lead devices. All have one lead next to the white marked area. And the other lead is longer. The one that's towards just the black body. Electrolytic capacitors are indicated by this circle. Divided in half. One has painted white. One has the color of the silk screening. You line up the white side of the electrolytic. with the white side and obviously then the long lead which indicates positive is next to the little plus sign. Easy to do. Read the designation and install the capacitor. Now two of them are already installed. They're on the uh, display board. We did that in part one. And there are two three terminal five volt regulators on this project. This is a uh, 78L05. The other one is a 7805. This is a TO92. 7805 is a TO220. This little fellow installs right here. You see the silk screen is flat and rounded on one end. From the top, this is flat and rounded. There's not much left to go now. There are four diodes. One's a power diode. And it actually sh shorts the input supply if uh, not polarized correctly. So its function is to protect the board from reverse voltage by shorting the power supply. Then we have these small signal diodes or glass bodied. And you notice one thing about all four diodes. One end is marked. The power diode is marked with a silver end. The glass bodied diodes are small signal diodes and they're one end 4148s. In any event, the diodes are marked like this for the power diode, which is D4, or like this, same marking, just smaller, for the small signal diodes. And the marked end of the diode corresponds to this flat line. Now these diodes, all four of them, are installed hairpin. 
and it looks like the marked end of the diode see if this is true in all cases goes to the top here's the other small signal diode D3 and again the line would go on to the top of the hairpin uh, turn diode so I'm saying that the marked end goes up and the diode would install like this with the marked end up. The 7805 is a three terminal voltage regulator. The legs just get bent at right angles. I secured it with a, a nut and then I soldered it. When something's mounted like that, that you want to mount it and then solder it. If I've followed the instructions correctly, we only have three things left to install. The power jack, the BNC connector for the antenna, and the audio output jack. And these are them. Ah, we have one more. Um, the power jack is at 5.5 by 2.5. Standard BNC connector. And this is a 3.5 millimeter audio connector. Once I get these three installed, then I'll put this right angle header in. Well, probably I'll put this right angle header on the uh, display board and plug it down in here. So it looks as if, in order to get all this stuff flush with the front of the panel, that this right angle connector just installs tightly. That is the small, the short end, the end with the plastic uh, strip on it, is flush against the display board. And of course it'll be soldered here. The only thing left to do is to plug in the ICs. Now I powered it up at 12 volts it draws about 40 milliamps, which is a little over half of the 90 milliamps it's supposed to draw when it's receiving. And I was wrong about this power connector. This is a 5.5 by 2.1 millimeter connector. Well, the board is powered up, and it's you can tune it. Right now it's 121.4. Point three and so on, but that's not enough because this may be 121.25. So I can push this in and get rid of the leading numeral 21 2.1 2.5. Three. So this is all right. I don't know more than that. 12 volts is drawing almost 100 milliamps, maybe a little more or less. The meter's bouncing a little bit around 100. I found some things I need to correct on the uh, parts list. So I'll finish up my editing of the construction portion of this. And with this I'll end part two.